Well, welcome back, guys. This is Agamemnon again for SE2 Mistakes, bringing you Game 3, where we get to see our hero Ziggy kick some proper butt and put those uh, pesky forward cannons to rest. So uh, I'm just going to go in, go ahead and hit play here. So we got Ziggy in the bottom left in the blue trunks. And in the top right, we have Miss Slick. So I guess she figures she's slippery enough to sneak into our hero's base and put down a couple scary little cannons. So we'll see how slick she really is. Um, so first of all, we, we got to see some nice uh, progress from our player Ziggy. Went from basically having <clears throat> what he felt like no idea how to deal with the uh, cannon rush in the game number one to very narrowly losing in game number two, but making some excellent strides. And game number three, we get to watch him just kick butt completely. So that's going to be lots of fun. Um, would like to note, though, that uh, Ziggy once again has put his pylon near his nexus. And actually, guys, I'm just going to... I'm just going to pause here for a quick second, okay? Because I'm just going to share a, a little story with you. So, in the last uh, video, I... I mentioned that for for a bunch of games there for a, just like a couple days I really all I did was cannon rush I just wanted to try it and see what would happen and quite frankly I made a lot of enemies and a lot of people raged at me so it wasn't fun and I stopped doing it but one guy that got really really mad you know what he said to me he said that it's not fair that I'm cannon rushing him because it's too hard to scout his entire base and by the time he finds my probe, it's too late, because I've already started building. Now that's a very interesting complaint. Um, what do you think would have happened if Ziggy had his pylon in the center, like he did in the last game, giving him vision of his ramp? Well, let's, uh, let's take a look. Because Mrs. Slick, she hasn't arrived yet. But what we're going to do is we're going to see, is it true? Is it really too hard? Do you need to scout your entire base in order to stop a cannon rush? Well, I think we're going to try and prove that wrong. Um, and we're going to see how Ziggy helps us to see that in this game. So first of all, Ziggy's building his gateway first. Which is a good thing to do for some units. Although if if I was Ziggy, maybe I'd like to have my gateway up here just to give me a little more vision if I don't want to build in my um, my choke point. But these tight building placements sure do look good, don't they? Alright, so here comes Mrs. Slick. Let's see what happens. We're going to go to the Ziggy Cam and see if he sees her, okay? And Ziggy Cam. Nope. Don't know she's there. So Ziggy does not know that she's there. But, there's this massive huge area that's just begging for cannons, right? So, there she is. And now she's gone. So you see what I, what I was trying to say with regards to having a building at your, your, uh, <clears throat> at your choke? It's, it's just free scouting. You know, you, ha you have that one building there. It's not really impeding any unit movement. And it lets you know when somebody's trying to sneak in and out of your base. We're going to pause right here. Okay, so now this is when Ziggy has caught up with the slippery Miss Slick. So do you, this the timing right now is 324. And Mrs. Slick actually sent that probe in a minute ago, like a full 60 seconds ago. So if, for example, he had that free scouting with that building here, if he was looking at his mini-map on a regular occasion, then this could have happened a minute earlier and what was mrs slick doing a minute earlier nothing she was just parking her uh, slippery little butt right here okay so this whole situation could possibly have been avoided not even by and this this is the thing it's not that you have to scout around your home ba your whole base but if you have eyes on your front choke there's there's nothing that can get by without you knowing right so you don't have to be constantly going all around your base at the beginning of the game. Um, just make sure you know what's going in and out your door, right? Keep that door locked. Use your peephole. But uh, make sure you know what's going on there. So, okay, I'm going to hit play. So again, that could have happened a little bit earlier. 
The other decision making that I'd really like to see come out of Ziggy in this game is the same he used in game number two, where he grabbed, you know, six of these probes and sent them right up and just get rid of that thing, right? Just get rid of it. Now, because Mrs. Slick, she wants to also block off his entrance, right? But this is alive. This pylon's still alive. <laughs> oh, Ziggy, you can't resist the slippery Miss Slick, can you? And from previous experience, Mr. Ziggy knows that attacking cannons with two probes doesn't work. Now, at this point, I would like to say that Ziggy is a freaking genius, okay? These two cannons are awesome. The reason why they're so good is because once these two are up, and once his two are up, these limit any further building from Mrs. Slick. So she can't come any closer. You remember in the first game, one of the reasons why I mentioned that maybe we'd be better if he just picked up and ran away, like just go get a new base. The reason for that was because he didn't have this. He could not stop that forward progression of those cannons, right? But watch what happens when they put this down. Boom. 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 Gone, right? <clears throat> so Miss Slick now knows that she cannot march those cannons any closer to his base. This area is essentially protected. Essentially protected. Now his front is blocked up. But we're going to actually see Ziggy use some really creative thinking, some real cool-headed reasoning, and he's going to figure out how to play the game he wants to play and just let Mrs. Slick do her stupid little thing up here. Because he knows she can't come any lower, right? So very, very nice decision making. Also, I'd like to say that with regards to Ziggy's play with these two uh, cannons, um, Notice he didn't go overboard. He didn't go and build like eight of them, right? You know, think, oh, I have to match every single one of these cannons. No, no. He just built enough so that he knows that this little prober can't build anywhere near his base. You know, nothing new is going to be warped in up here. It, it's perfect. It's great. Got a nice little cannon here at the back just in case she tries to sneak along the back edge. But notice Miss Slick has to build in a nice wide perimeter away from Ziggy's base. And he puts one here to match any possible movement in this area right here. So very nice decision making. Excellent play on the part of, uh, of our man Ziggy. Let's see, what else? Okay, let's take a look at the army tab. That's always fun to look at. Ooh, Ziggy's got 425 plus 50, 475 army supply. Or army value. Um, how much does uh, Miss Slick have? Zero. Zero, zero, zero. So this is a recurring theme. I want you guys to, to kind of recognize that when you see this kind of investment in cannons and pylons, you are safe to assume even without scouting, you're safe to assume that your opponent has nothing. Especially at this point in the game. Because realize, that's 150 for each one of these. 150. That means that you can't build any gateways, right? Look at Mrs. Slick's money. She barely has enough money to make probes. Let alone actually build any production facilities. But she is building a sneaky little gateway back here. I imagine she's trying to build up an army in this area and use this cannon line as uh, kind of a second home base. But, but look how cool-headed and, and even our uh, our hero Ziggy is being. What do you do when your uh, opponent has no army? Ah, build a bigger army, right? As soon as he's able to get out, he's going to crush Mrs. Slick. Even though she's slippery, he's going to step on her and she's not going to slip out. He's going to crush Mrs. Slick, right? Look at that army tab. He's got 818, 19, he's got almost 2,000 value worth of army, and Miss Slick still has zero. Still has zero. Okay, so let's speed this up a bit because we've seen some really good decision making with these defensive cannons. Um, 
we've seen how perhaps using some scouting, uh, Ziggy would have been able to perhaps um, eliminate this right off the bat. But his calm decision making is going to help him to win this game. And from facing this two more times in the past, he's not panicking, he's just making good decisions. So when your front is blocked, how do you get out? You get out with a warp prism. Very good, very good. I think he even picks up a probe, doesn't he? No? Nope. Yeah, oh, go get that probe. Go get it. Get it. Ah, uh, good Ziggy. Very good. Okay, so Ziggy's now picking up this probe. Um, let's follow him. I'd like to see if you want, if you want to um, expand. I'd like to see, see Ziggy have that uh, war prison prism full, like completely full. I think it can hold eight um, probes. Eight probes is a nice amount for a new um, a new base. 